Hello to the Chicos and the Chicas. What a game again, ladies and gentlemen. This uh, World Championship final just keeps on giving one entertaining game after the next. Today was another sensational game. So let's dive right into it. Um, we are going to kick off proceedings today with the Nimzo. Yet another new opening on the menu of the World Championship final. And uh, with a slight detour, we are going to enter the very old and famous Zamish variation where White goes, you know what, I want to force you to give up that bishop. I dare you to do that. Then I conquer the entire center with a later e4. And I'm going to have a go at you with my two bishops. Rook a2 was played. This is a very strange move at first sight because it seems entirely purposeless. The point is that the rook often um, transposes or rather transfers itself to the king side uh, via, via even the second rank. Um, so rook a2. I'm going to once again blitz through the opening phase because there is so much to talk about um, that happened later on e4 bishop a6 and bishop g5 this is a very well known um concept in this uh opening variation for white in the zamish the so-called uh, fishing hook trap where we offered the bishop to be captured and then we retake back with the pawn and then uh, there will be an attack along the h file i have been thinking about where i've seen this idea and now it occurred to me the perfect timing in one of dvoretsky's books um the calculating ones I can't remember for the life of me now the title, but it's one of those amazing Dvoretsky books. There are two games uh, by the German Grandmaster Rainer Nack, K-N-A-A-K, -A -A and one of his games features this uh, um, fishing hook attempt or idea in the Nimzo, and that whole entire game is complete bonkers, and Dvoretsky's analysis adds so much spice to it. Uh, every single line is just fireworks, just like here. And indeed, the best course of action for black is to accept the piece and then immediately offer it back. And after GF, Queen F6, we have got a very interesting situation where the black minor pieces are still tucked away on the queen side, but it's also unclear how white can attack here very quickly and efficiently on the king side because a very um, upfront and uh, brutally honest queen d2 would be very strongly met by cd and if queen h6, queen g7 and black has absolutely nothing to fear. On this note, the commentators mentioned that black has an alternative way to play this, which is to insert this at one point the CD, CD capture, and in fact they were suggesting that Nepo may have forgotten doing so. Um, obviously those positions have different kinds of consequences, but uh, this is, I think, the first key position where Ding went in with the very uncompromising, super aggressive E5, a positional pawn sec, the idea being to create a D5, a D pass pawn, as well as to open up the E4 square for the g3 knight capture was played d5 was played knight e7 and d6 the commentators tried to make knight e4 work and there were some insane variations there discuss key queen f4 bishop d3 bishop takes c4 is one of those absolute bangers a really really lovely line and here after g3 queen f5 if i'm not mistaken the best idea was to play f3 unbelievable stuff with the idea of swinging the rook across uh, to h2 and if bishop a2 then white has queen d2 with the deadly queen h6 and now black's only way to be off of the hook haha <laughs> that was a great pun was to take here and after queen h6 take the rook with check takes and now we can already we don't have to worry about knight f6 anymore bishop takes d5 and if I, my count is correct that black is about 37 pawns ahead and has got two rooks for the queen. The white attack is insufficient and black is going to go on to win. So hence d6 first, knight f5, knight e4 of course now, that makes perfect sense, queen d8 and queen d3. The position remains incredibly sharp and uh, for both sides, pretty much only moves all the way. Now the deadly threat, of course, is queen h3 and Matutsky on the g file. And so king g7 was forced. And this looks like a very disheartening move from white's perspective because rook h8 is just such a, a wet blanket type of move that reigns on white's parade. But um, Ding Liren wasn't to be 
uh, discouraged and he just carried on like a champ. G4, Bishop B7, incredibly resourceful. Yeah, Nepomnishi uh, is uh, on the attack, but so is he on the defense. Now, after take take, the knight is hanging. It can't go anywhere. And very important, very important to know that after Queen H3, Bishop E4, Queen check doesn't matter where. King F6, the Black King walks and wins the game. Wowzers. Very, very important detail there. So almost instantly here, Ding Liren at Rook H3, Knight H4, and G5. Relentless aggression. Absolutely amazing attack. And we are approaching the first key moment of the game. Bishop takes E4, a major mistake that could have cost the game to the Russian. Um, instead, Rook H8 was to be preferred. And here there is an absolutely brain blowing mind blowing variation for white um, to try to win with which is f4 it's a really really clever idea the concept is to sink a knight on f6 and then bring the rook across here and deliver a mate on the h file and the reason why f4 is needed amongst other reasons obviously we want to come across here because if we don't play f4 e4 hurts us really badly and then knight of free check is incoming so the f4's pawn stack also diverts the pawn so that now it can't be pushed forward and also note now that the rook that we placed on a2 on move 8 now joins the fray on move 25 now that is what i call foresight um so yeah that was the the way to go and the variation that i really like goes like this knight of six knight of free check Rook f3, bishop f3, and not queen takes f3, because then after queen d6, once again, the 37 black pawns will more than outweigh the two minor pieces. Black is already completely winning here. But instead of queen f3, there is the cunning d7. Now queen f3 is a threat, and if the bishop goes back, we have queen d6. And all of a sudden, the dark square domination of the white pieces become quite a nuisance. Uh, to the degree where it appears that queen b8 is the only move and after queen c6 of course this position is much much better compared to the previous scenario but even here the engine claims equal t now all this said instead of all of this jan took on e4 and now this is straight down he'll believe it or not it's absolute carnage after knight f5 ding uncorked the absolute genius rook d2 that move was an absolute cold shower. Everyone, including the commentators, on reckoned only with queen e5, and I think Jan too. When after f6 takes queen f6, there is no problems to report about. Black is going to survive without any dramas whatsoever. But this little positional touch, rook d2, just completely messes up Black's defense in every which way. The myriads of threats are really, really concerning. The most obvious ones are Queen H1, Queen E5, and D7. And if Black plays the obvious looking Queen takes G5, there comes Queen E5. Now with Queen F6, then the check wins the Queen. And if Pawn F6, be prepared for something utterly beautiful. Queen H2, Matutsky is threatened. If knight h4, actually that hangs, sorry, knight, if knight h6, then f4, and the queen can no longer guard the h6 knight, and the game is lost. Better still, if rook h8, now comes the genius behind this move, takes, takes, check, takes, d7, and there is no way to stop the promotion of the pawn. Wow! That is just mind-bogglingly beautiful variation there. So that was just Ding pulling off the bunny out of the hat. And lo and behold, black is dead lost. But that's not the end of our story. Rook H8 was played. Takes, takes. And here, the winning move is actually not so simple. We need to once again redeploy the rook and just slide it up one more square, rook d3. This was the first real shock in the game that Ding Liren missed this. I wouldn't call it a shock that he missed it, but it was a shock in terms of it changed again the evaluation of the game. And this, uh, the, the miss of rook d3 uh, already sort of was a telltale sign that things were not going as great for white. 
uh, as the position indicated. Once again, rook d3 threatens rook h3, queen h1, and the pile up on the h file is decisive. Not much to be done there. I will give you an example variation rook, d8, rook h3, let's say queen g8 just to stay in the vicinity, but then queen e5 decides. So let's go instead queen f8. Uh, and then take stakes and then we pull back down here or even we can take because after this this now we have got the check So actually this is just utter carnage the game is over But unfortunately Ding got a little bit too excited Push the pawn up to d7 and now after rook d8 there is no clear win in sight at all Then after queen e5 check king h7 he repeated a few times I guess to gain time on the clock and went queen c7 against which the patient defense with queen f8, queen a7 and queen e7 was recommended by the engine, admittedly still preferable to white by quite a significant margin. But brace yourselves, Nepo plays queen h4, hangs the d8 rook in hope of a, of a perpetual check, which is completely false. And the refutation is so beautiful. And again, the game flips on its head. Queen d8 and white is completely winning. Wasn't played. Queen e4 check, rook e2, queen check. Mind you, this is an extremely difficult, very difficult one to calculate. Queen b2, king d3, queen b1, and rook c2. This is the key move. And now both branches are nothing short of insane. If you take the bishop, I simply go king d2 and believe it or not the king hides on b2. Now that is so difficult to visualize because when you have this set up, your brain is naturally directed to the concept of the king has to run this way. There is no going back anymore. And so you don't even consider just pulling the back. I mean, one should consider it, but it just feels so illogical to try to do that. It's just absolute bonkers. And after king d2, um, yeah, the king is going to successfully hide and um, that's it. That's it. Even better, if queen d1, I did not want to believe my eyes. And I think this is what Nepo calculated. And he probably stopped here. And I reckon ding d2. But after king e4, queen takes c2, bishop d3, this game is over. There is a new queen um, to be seen on the chessboard very very soon and uh, there is nothing black can do the most insane variation is knight d6 check king e5 <laughs> queen takes d3 queen f6 check king h7 d8 queen knight takes c4 check king f4 um what was it that i looked at here e5 check king g4 queen e4 check king g3 and that's when the checks ran out and white is winning with the two queens. What a line. What an absolutely crazy city line. But of course, with limited time, this is a very common uh, perpetual check pattern, by the way. So it's very easy to believe this bluff because, I mean, actually, I shouldn't call it a bluff because I think Nepo didn't see it either. So he genuinely believed that he had a perpetual check here. Definitely not there, sorry, definitely on h1. So check there, check there, so the rook has to come. And I think that this was the line that uh, Nepo miscalculated here. That, um, yeah, after this check and this check, king e4 was playable. So that was the last chance for Ding to really play for a win. But he believed his opponent. And after queen h4 played king d1, trying to leg it to the queen side, queen g5, king c2, queen e7. And now we are back to a game that is very difficult to win. After bishop g2, if I recall rightly, the engines were very keen on playing knight d4, c d4, rook takes d7. And I think this would have been probably the cleanest attempt at a draw. Queen e5, f6, queen e4, and then just take on d4 as well. Looks like a very, very drawish uh, situation to me. So instead of this, Nepo played e5. And here I think that white still had a chance to come out on top with uh, bishop c6 or even queen takes a7 here. Queen a7 was actually played. Yeah, I think this was the timid move. That's right. This is, was the last point of uh, perhaps doing something a little bit more meaningful. King b3 is the engine's top choice. 
uh, with the idea that if you take take, then uh, now after rook d7, we have queen takes b6 and the a pawn runs. So if we compare that to the game, in the game we had instead of king b3, we had take right away, knight g4, bishop f3, take, take. And now white has, excuse me, black has e4. And that is very, very annoying because now the bishop gets shut down. It never gets to go to d5. And after rook e2, f5, a very cruel move. And now Nepo is in his element. He's going to pick up d7. And there is no way that uh, black is going to lose this game. The pawns are just too menacing. And indeed, after a number of uh, queen moves, they traded everything off and agreed on draw right after these moves. An absolute bonker city tactical fireworks. I just am out of superlatives about how good this match is and uh, how exciting the games are. Once again, Ding might feel that he got robbed a little bit here. I think that he had multiple chances to convert uh, this attack into a win. He failed to do so. And as we are approaching the end of the match, all of these half points and missed half points will count as double. So he really, really needs to shape up if he is to fight back and uh, have a great hot go at the title. Uh, we have got five games left. So very, very excited to see how it all shapes up. Uh, that's it for me now. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to sub to like, the super like, and I will be back with the next video soon. Bye.